All right, hey everybody. Um, as uh, Dave mentioned, this talk is on defending in doxing. Um, I thought I'd uh, make the slides a little more relevant for the place and context. Um, I'm sure a lot of you from this area know where that is, up on the parkway. Um, so who am I? Um, some relatedness uh, for you. I am a, um, a incident response engineer and threat researcher at Akamai Technologies. Um, I do systems architecture reviews um, before products go live um, and for major changes. Um, I also do trainings and workshops for incident management. And um, what I really, really love doing is spending a lot of time on the CD underbelly of the internet and um, getting information about different actors and their tools and their methods and things like that so that we can then um, use that to better protect ourselves and our customers. All right, so uh, two of the terms that we're gonna be talking a lot about here are doxing and swatting. Doxing is publicly releasing a person's identifying information, including but not limited to their full name, date of birth, address, phone number, and pictures. Sometimes that also includes um, things like social security numbers, uh, bank account numbers, things like that. Um, swatting is uh, to um, cause the SWAT team or the police to bust down somebody's uh, door and raid their home um, based on false information. All right, so why should we care about those things? Well, uh, when someone's doxxed, uh, it can be, um, that information can be used for, um, you know, pranking or um, sort of gray, shady marketing. Um, uh, it can also release uh, sensitive information. Um, we'll talk about um, one of the big releases of sensitive information that was uh, very recent a little later. Um, it could lead to online harassment, bullying, and cyber stalking. Um, it can also lead to some scarier things like identity theft, swatting, and being targeted for physical attack out in meat space. All right, so, you know, like I, like I mentioned, uh, you know, it could be something like a, a phone prank call that you get because your phone number was released out there and, you know, that's obnoxious, but you can deal with it. Um, it may also be something a little shadier. That guy's obviously shady. Um, and uh, those sorts of things are when somebody calls to try and social engineer you or try and scam you. Um, and all of the information from a docs can uh, lead to them being very convincing in their scam. If somebody has your physical address, it could lead to something easy to deal with but annoying, like somebody leaving a flaming bag of poo on your doorstep. Uh, or it could be something more serious, like having your tires slashed. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Having your tires slashed. All right. Um, so those are hypotheticals. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, real world um, cases of where uh, people's um, information being released without their knowledge or want um, led to some uh, unfortunate circumstances. So, uh, and this is, uh, I changed the names in it um, to try and give this kid uh, a little more um, dignity back, uh, but uh, he was working for a bank and uh, he emailed his boss um, about a family emergency and uh, he's telling his boss, you know, I need to go to New York uh, this morning. Sorry for the uh, late notice. Um, I need to deal with some family issues. Um, and uh, thanks a lot. So his boss writes back the next day. You can see it's November 1st. Um, and he says, Tim, thank you for letting us know. I hope everything is okay in New York. Cool wand. That's strange. Why would he mention a wand? And why did he CC the director? Huh. Well, it turns out, unbeknownst, unbeknownst to uh, Tim, uh, his friends had posted a bunch of information on Facebook. Um, it's not on his Facebook, but it's linked to him, and he was tagged in a bunch of photos. Um, and there were a lot of talk about, you know, this family emergency that he had in um, New York. Oh, yeah. Turns out the family emergency was going to a Halloween party and just getting completely trashed. Um, and so the reference to the wand and uh, unfortunately the kid did lose his job because of this so um, being mindful of what's out there about you um, is something that uh, could save your skin so something a little more serious Sunil Tripathi anybody who was following the uh, Boston 
bombing, um, marathon bombing, uh, and you were online on Reddit or 4chan or something like that, you know that uh, there was um, some online internet sleuthing going on. And um, one of the people that uh, Reddit um, had uh, fingered as being um, the bomber uh, early on, his name was Sunil Tripathi, and uh, a lot of media started picking this up as well. Um, and he was doxxed on both Reddit and 4chan. Um, all of him and his family's information uh, was put out there. Um, so his family started receiving uh, death threats, um, harassment, both in person and online. Um, and uh, it turns out Sunil was missing since before the bombings ha happened. Um, and uh, what had happened was he committed suicide and his body was found uh, in the Providence River in Rhode Island. Um, and so his family is having to deal with uh, not only their son's suicide, but um, a lot of uh, threats and harassment as well in the real world. So uh, that's, uh, that's a case where being doxxed had a real impact. Another time uh, in recent history is uh, Amanda Todd, a girl who was um, blackmailed and uh, bullied online, uh, ended up taking her life. Um, and Anonymous got into their white knight mode um, and decided we're going to find the man who did this and they ended up doxing the wrong man. Um, this man, um, like the previous uh, example, received uh, death threats, harassment. Um, it ended up being so bad that he had to quit his job, move across the country, and change his name uh, to uh, try and escape all of this. So it was a real upset for his life uh, when he had nothing to do with um, the Amanda Todd case. Another more public one was the uh, fingering of the shooter of Michael Brown in Ferguson. Um, and uh, again, the wrong person and his mother for some reason, uh, they were doxxed. Uh, they never had any ties to the Ferguson Police Department. Um, they also received death threats, things thrown at their house, um, uh, so damage to their house. Uh, and they both ended up being victims of ID theft. Um, you know, cards and bank accounts and things like that were opened in their name based on the information that was released. So those are you know, things that you can deal with, um, but uh, you're not necessarily um, being shot at or harmed physically. Um, but in the next case, swatting, um, that can very well occur. Um, when you have a bunch of um, armed uh, people busting into your house, there are a lot of things that can go wrong in a tense situation like that. Um, we know there are, there are lots of examples of um, SWAT teams moving in and um, shooting a person or a dog um, just because of the way that they reacted or didn't react in time. So you can see a lot of examples of uh, SWATting going on. Um, a lot of online gamers who uh, stream when they're gaming, um, uh, there's a uh, you know, when one gamer wants to take out another gamer, they'll call in the SWAT team on them, and there's a lot of recordings of this going on uh, live. And um, during Gamergate, uh, there are a lot of the um, outspoken, um, you know, uh, female gamers and supporters of female gamers and game designers uh, who were targeted for swatting as well. Um, Ashton Kutcher was swatted twice, um, and of course Brian Krebs, who I'm sure a lot of you know, uh, was also swatted. Um, Though, the good thing is, after the first time it happened, he got together with his uh, uh, local police department and they were able to um, stop some future swatting attempts as well, uh, which is really nice. So if, uh, if you want somebody swatted and you don't want to get caught or don't want to do it yourself, there are services where you can pay to have somebody swatted. Um, so this is one of the... Uh, the um, onion router, uh, onion sites, uh, uh, a marketplace where you can purchase different services and one of them is swatting. Um, and he says that he'll get it done within 10 days anywhere in the US for 100 bucks. And uh, he has pretty good reviews. Um, there are a number of people that use the service and were happy with it. And you can see this is rather recent. Okay, so Doxing isn't necessarily um, a uh, US only phenomenon. Um, there is um, an analog in China called
called the Human Flesh Search Engine. Um, and this started out um, you know, among academics that were trying to out people um, who they thought were um, putting out false papers or falsifying their research, things like that. Um, and usually what, it would, what, it, what would happen is a group would get together on a forum and they would uh, find friends and friends of friends who worked in different areas that uh, could get them access to information about this person that they wanted to uncover. Um, so it went from there to being something that was used to harm other people or to scare other people, um, and then also used by activists against uh, who they thought were corrupt officials, things like that. Um, so it was a, it's a double-edged sword in that way. Um, in the Eastern European and former Soviet bloc, um, the, uh, they really like uh, doxing celebrities, um, and they'll trade uh, celebrity information and they'll uh, sell it if you want to buy it. Um, there is also, excuse me, there was also for a while um, a website, I'm sure some of you have seen this, but uh, leaked, and uh, you can see here um, there's docs on Michelle Obama, Chris Christie, Bill Gates, um, Hulk Hogan. Uh, Britney Spears, Paris Hilton, Jay-Z, Beyonce, and those had like their personal cell phone numbers, um, their family members' numbers, um, their addresses, their social security numbers, um, a lot of things in those that uh, you would not want out there. All right, so how do doctors go about building this profile of your uh, personally identifiable information? Well, of course, they use the Googles. Um, and uh, Google Foo is uh, what a lot of them will uh, call it when they uh, just use you know basic operators and boolean and things like that. Um, there are also there's also a uh, Google hacking site uh, that will do a lot of that for you. Um, and uh, one of the first things that a doctor will do is if they have either your username or an email address for you, they'll go online and try and um, match usernames to email addresses and vice versa, so they can find more accounts that you've been associated with. Um, also, if your information is up on a website, uh, or was up on a website, but is no longer there, um, they can use the things like the Wayback Machine to go and look at earlier snapshotted versions of a forum or a website where that information would have been. Um, also, uh, they look for variations of usernames and email addresses. Um, if your username was um, like big hack 555, they'd then search for big hack or big hack 55, things like that, um, to try and find more accounts that you were associated with. There are also automated tools um, that help them do these things faster and make it less manual. The Harvester, um, this one you can target individuals or a business, and it'll go through um, Bing, Google, LinkedIn. Um, and a number of other sources to find you know, um, email addresses associated with that person or company, to find um, you know, skill sets that are associated with them, uh, businesses, things like that. Um, Maltigo, Maltigo's uh, useful for um, really building a visual diagram of somebody's social network, um, who, they're, uh, who they're talking to, who they're involved with, what businesses they're involved with, things like that. Um, Creepy uh, is a Python script that uses Facebook's um, API to uh, get information about somebody through their friends. Um, so it, it uh, uses some API calls that, uh, for information that aren't available um, through the uh, browser interface of Facebook. So even if you have your Facebook locked all the way down, uh, your friends' connections to you can seek some information. Uh, Recon NG is um, a very extensive uh, framework for doing uh, reconnaissance on a person or a business, um, and it includes some of the things that the Harvester and Creepy do as well. All right, so uh, the next place they'll hit after Google is um, your Facebook account, your Twitter account, your LinkedIn account, things like that, um, because those will give contact info. Um, they'll give information about family members. Um, where you normally go, what your patterns are, uh, what your interests are, um, what skills you, you have or don't have, um, jobs that you have or have had in the past, um, as well as who your colleagues are. And a lot of the information that's found on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and LinkedIn 
um, is information that could lead someone to being able to guess your security questions um, for your accounts so that they can then get in and uh, see the account as uh, the owner of the account would. Um, like one of the most common security questions is uh, my favorite pet or my first pet. If you go all the way back through somebody's Facebook, chances are they've mentioned this pet at some point. Um, so that's just an example. Uh, for somebody who doesn't have uh, Facebook locked down, um, this is some of the information that uh, you can get. Um, children's names and uh, ages. Again, that's useful for brute forcing somebody's password or uh, their security questions. Um, your birth date, again, good for guessing somebody's password or username. Um, contact information, including email address and where you physically live, your current address. Um, uh, the colleges that you've been to, where you've worked, things like that. Um, also, your political views and religious views. That could be used for social engineering as well. But it doesn't say your favorite color, so you're safe. <laughs> right, right, right. So you're good. Yeah, I'm trying to remember mine. I don't remember. See, that's a big that's not security question. I don't know the answer. Yeah. That's a really good security question, but you're never going to be able to access it. Yeah. Um, so some other places uh, that aren't like the Facebook, the Twitters, um, forums that you frequent, um, uh, groups that you're in, or mailing lists that you're a part of. A lot of mailing lists keep archives. Um, and uh, information that you can get from that is somebody's birth date, their age, their geographic location. A lot of those things are standard when you sign up for a forum or group, it asks you um, to put those in. Um, also, uh, for some forums that you may be a part of, uh, it uh, leaks information about what your um, secret hobbies or fetishes are. Um, also, uh, it, uh, it will show who you talk to the most on those, um, on those uh, forums or groups. Um, in your history, uh, and so what that's useful for is being able to fish somebody by um, uh, acting like uh, that trusted user that they're used to talking to. Um, also, uh, breaches. Um, you know, a, a lot of forums and groups and mailing lists have had breaches um, that uh, leaked the information that you thought was only between you and the admin or you and one other person um, that's now out in the open. Um, one such breach that lit out a um, lot of uh, very sensitive information that is actively and currently being used to blackmail people is the adult friend finder breach. So uh, if you go through uh, the actual leaked info, you'll see a whole lot of um, .mil and .gov addresses in there, um, as well as other companies. Um, Akamai is not in there. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, but, you know, again, that's, uh, that gives information about, you know, what your, um, sexual proclivities are, um, if you're married and it shows you, like, hooking up with other people, that's, um, you know, useful for blackmail, um, and it's, uh, useful information that they can, uh, do damage to you with. Um, also something that seems benign, Yahoo groups, especially groups like FreeCycle, um, if you go in there, people often um, will use the same username that they use on other sites, um, and they'll give out their address or their geographic location, saying, hey, I've got this free thing. Come pick it up at this address. So now you have their physical address as well. Um, who is information is, uh, is useful if you're not using a uh, privacy or a proxy um, for registering your domain name. Um, then uh, the who is information will include typically your full name, your phone number, your fax number, it still asks for that, um, your email addresses, and your physical address that you or your business is located at. Here's an example. So you could see um, for searchenginejournal.com, you could see uh, you know, when it expires, uh, who the owner is, uh, their email address, um, where they physically are, their phone number, and uh, yes, uh, she doesn't have a fax number because it's 2015. Um, data brokers. Okay, so these, this is like where the scary information comes from. Um, so Spokio, Intellius, People, PQ, um, uh, a lot of uh, CheckU. There's a lot of sites uh, like this, and what they do is they uh, buy and aggregate data from various sources, and then um, turn around and sell it. Um, to anybody who wants it. 
So uh, uh, the free versions of it, um, you can get full name, including maiden name, um, and ages, uh, current and former addresses, and then um, lots of information about their family members um, and uh, you know, people that they've previously lived with. Um, but if you pay, then you get things like uh, copies of their criminal records, um, school records, uh, retail activity information. Um, you know, when you go in the store and uh, the people ask you, uh, you know, do you want to put in your um, email address or your phone number, things like that, um, a lot of that information is bundled up and resold. So you can see uh, Intellius has three different tiers of um, where you can buy information. Um, and uh, as you can see, the, the one that's um, the, the highest tier, the $50 version um, of somebody's records, has a whole lot of information. Um, including things like liens, um, you know, uh, uh, death records, um, lawsuits, um, things that uh, you might not want out there in the public. Um, and just really nasty, Spokio, one of these uh, data brokers, um, one of the ways that they advertise their service is uh, they will uncover personal photos, videos, and secrets guaranteed. Come on, guys. Like, that's just, that's shady. That's true. Um, so, uh, public records. Uh, another uh, way that doctors can get a lot of information about you. Um, uh, if you've incorporated a business, um, if you've purchased land or a house, um, if you've registered a patent or a trademark, um, all that information is public, and um, you could see uh, who your business partners are, um, your addresses, their addresses, um, histories of dealings with different uh, entities and individuals, as well as mappings to other businesses uh, that you may be affiliated with. So, if we go, but that is a public record. Yep. It always has been, and so are you going to speak to what the problem is or what the problem Yes. Oh, well, there are ways to protect yourself against uh, having your information out there. And we'll go over that in a little bit. So as you can see here on this um, Articles for Incorporation, um, it has uh, the, the business owners as well as their street addresses and their uh, zips. Sometimes it'll also have things like um, phone numbers. Um, and uh, along with a lot of the sites that you can view that aggregate the public information, um, it'll show um, almost like Multigo-like um, connections. Um, and a lot of times it'll show uh, what other businesses you might have an association with other folks that um, you've worked with before. Uh, and if you've purchased a house or a land, um, I'm sure this might look familiar to some of you who are from this area. This is Buncombe County's uh, uh, GIS and uh, deed information portal. Um, so here you can see things like um, the uh, where the plot of land is, as well as the address and full name of the person uh, who owns it. Um, you could see the property value um, and who owned it before. That's really good for social engineering, especially if they just sold it. Um, because if you pose as um, one of the people who, um, who just sold it to this person, they're more likely to open an email or an attachment or something like that because they've had uh, current dealings with that person. Um, other information uh, that's included are um, the uh, improvements that have been done to the land or the house. Um, and uh, something that's a, a little scary, especially if you're paranoid, is uh, it gives layouts of the house. Um, uh, you know, where different rooms are, how big they are, um, things like that. Uh, so if somebody wanted to cause you physical harm um, or break into your house or something like that, uh, that gives them useful information. Yes? Most of them, I think Buncombe County in particular does actually links directly to GIS and mm -hmm. satellite imagery as well. Yep. And not just satellite imagery of uh, like one period of time, they'll give you a selection of different seasons as well. Um, other public records that uh, give out useful information, um, uh, if you've given political contributions, um, then uh, that typically will include your name, address, your affiliation um, and uh, how much you're donating, um, which is again useful information when taken in tandem with lots of other information for uh, tricking somebody into doing something. Um, if you've signed a petition or a petition for recall, that'll give your name, your geographic location, and again, more fuel for social engineering because 
uh, they'll understand what your leanings may be. EXIF data. All right, so um, if you've taken a picture with your phone or a video with your phone or um, a, a newer uh, digital capturing device, um, a lot of times they have uh, features that will give uh, tag metadata onto these um, uh, pieces of media that tell um, you know, whoever's looking at it about the device or, com or a computer that was used, um, the software that was used, and the version. Um, so that's, you know, it could be useful. But uh, even scarier than that is a lot of times it'll include times and dates of uh, when it was taken, as well as GPS coordinates of where that picture was taken or that video was made. So here's an example of um, the metadata from um, a photo uh, that I found online. Is, uh, it, it shows the time that it was taken, uh, as well as the camera that it was taken with, um, and the latitude and longitude of uh, where that picture was snapped. Um, so uh, if you've got somebody's album of, uh, you know, this is the park by our house or something like that, um, uh, now you know a place that they frequent and exactly where it is and when they might typically be there. Um, another way of getting lots of information is social engineering. Um, there are, uh, if you hang out in some of the forums or IRC channels that uh, these doxer kids hang out in, um, they'll uh, talk about how they called this person's ISP or phone company and acted like um, a spouse or a family member or a secretary or something like that um, and uh, got the ISP or phone company to give out information about um, calls that were made, um, what type of uh, phone or plan they have, um, and uh, sometimes even giving uh, the doxer full access to the account online. Um, and uh, a lot of times the people that have the ability to do this, um, you know, are low paid, um, tier one support people, um, and are typically easy to social engineer. Um, so uh, also calling current or former places of work and acting like uh, somebody who's doing a background check or somebody who is at um, a, a new um, uh, a new hiring opportunity uh, can get a lot of information out of uh, a secretary or somebody in HR. Um, posing to family um, as a friend of the person or posing to friends as a family member of the person, especially when you act like there's a lot of uh, urgency or there's an emergency going on, people tend to um, get the adrenaline going and give out more information than they probably should. All right, so what do we do about all of this? I just don't want to be chicken little and say, oh, this is terrible. I want to actually give you something that you can do. Um, so one of the first things that you should do if you haven't already is really lock down um, your security and privacy settings for social media, Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, things like that. Um, be uh, mindful in particular about the personal information that you put up there. Um, you don't have to put real information. Um, a lot of times you can leave a lot of those questions blank as well. Um, uh, especially on LinkedIn, when somebody's trying to connect with you, um, make sure you know that person. You know, vet the connection. Uh, that is a, a common way for people to uh, find out a lot about somebody is to just send them a LinkedIn request from a false profile. Um, untag yourself in Facebook photos, if, especially if that photo um, was not taken by you and maybe has information in it that uh, you don't want associated with yourself. Um, also, uh, third-party apps, especially for Facebook, are really shady. Um, they have a lot of um, access to your Facebook information, um, and uh, the, these uh, third-party apps can easily be sold um, you know, off to somebody who might have more malicious intent, like harvesting information. Um, and so uh, I would uninstall those. You don't really need to play Farmville. Uh, Basic account security, use strong passphrases. Uh, wherever two-factor authentication is available, please, please use it. Um, uh, Single-factor authentication is very, very easy to bypass. Um, two-factor authentication, it's possible to bypass, as we saw um, with the uh, previous speaker talking about uh, Android devices being compromised. Um, also, uh, reusing passwords is, uh, right now, it's really hot for um, people to uh, use automated account checkers and brooders. Um, they'll get information from uh, a breach, you know, people's usernames and passwords, and then just apply that across the board to a whole bunch of other sites to see um, where people have reused their credential information. So a breach from one site can lead to somebody hacking your account on a completely different site. 
Um, so uh, old accounts, especially ones that have information about you it, and you're not using it, um, just clean them out, shut them down, turn them into shells. Um, and uh, retail sites, when um, they ask you, you know, you put in all your information to order something and they ask you, do you want us to save this data for later uh, purchases? Yes, it might make it easier to purchase things, but I would suggest not doing that because it's, it's not a case of uh, that company might be breached at some point. It's uh, they're going to be breached. It's just when. Uh, so having that information not saved uh, protects you against the, uh, something like a breach like that. Um, who is information? Uh, you can use a uh, proxy registration. Um, you could see somebody here on the, the left side who um, did not use it. It gives you know, lots of information about you. But uh, like this service protected domain services fronts their information instead of yours. <coughs> question on this one. Yeah. Um, is this about ownership? Well, the transfer, but if you're a business and it's your business website and you have your business's UPS store or whatever on there mm -hmm. and it's on the website anyway, then the private registration, you have a different threat model. So there's a oh, balance. Sure. It's not oh, all, sure. sometimes, and that's really kind of my question is how would you suggest people balance um, the need to be public, especially in a business or a because oftentimes small businesses are owned by individuals or a small group, and they need to be known, not to be mm -hmm. completely unfindable on the internet. So, so it's, it's, you want to do ongoing CBAs. You want to do cost-benefit analysis um, ongoingly. If you are a public figure um, and part of your income model is for you to be out there, then of course you're going to have a very different um, uh, cost-benefit you know, table than somebody who wants to be private and doesn't want their information out there. Um, and uh, as, as we were talking about earlier, um, it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's each person is going to have to take into account, um, you know, uh, is, is this right for me? Um, is this going to hurt my business more than it's worth the protection? Um, and so it's, it's uh, going to be different from person to person and business to business. And again, it's going to be different between people, individuals, and businesses. So um, these are just general... Uh, things that you can do, but you don't have to apply them if it doesn't make sense for you. So thank Most you. Most businesses are people. Most businesses are not giant corporations with a board and everything. Most are, you know, family. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are ways of incorporation um, that are good uh, from a liability sense, um, but are also good from a privacy sense and that it is not directly tied to your personal information. You can have a business address like at a, a P.O. box or something like that, and not have it be your physical address. OK, so those data clearing houses that we saw earlier, um, where you can pay for lots of information, um, all of them have opt-out mechanisms. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll, if somebody wants these slides, um, I'll go ahead and give them out, um, because at the bottom, it has a meta list of um, uh, pretty much all of the major ones and how you opt out of them. Um, so Spokio people and Zoom Info are three of the largest ones, um, and they just require email verification for opting out. Axiom. What's that? How about Axiom. Oh, um, I'm not sure if that one's there. If it, the meta list might very well have that. I didn't put all of them up here. Um, so whitepages.com, uh, uh, they require email address and phone number, um, and they also cap how many you can do in a period of time for your own safety, whatever that means. Um, and uh, Intellius is like definitely the, the big dog. Um, they gobbled up a bunch of other smaller ones. Um, and their opt-out is, I'm not sure about, because uh, they ask for a photocopy government ID. And um, if I'm opting out because I don't want my information up there, I kind of feel weird giving them more PII. So. All right, so um, when we were talking about the difference between individuals and uh, businesses, um, you don't have to register or incorporate um, a business uh, with your name. Um, you can use a doing business as or a fictitious name. Um, some states, you don't even have to uh, you know, go through the, um, the whole process for registering it. You can just use it. Um, and uh, for the states that do require registration, um, you can usually do it at the county clerk's office or the state government's website. For, um, they'll have websites where you can search for um, businesses and um, entity information. 
Now, when you're buying property um, or a house, you don't have to uh, put all that information out there um, about yourself um, or your property or your um, address, your name, things like that. Um, you can um, uh, do it through a holding corporation or through a land trust. Um, and uh, you know, you want to consult a real estate lawyer, of course, for the right way to set it up for where you are. Um, but what will happen is either the lawyer, um, the lawyer's information will be fronted for you or the corporate holding corporation's information um, that you've registered with, say, a fictitious name um, would be fronted uh, on those public records. So it won't actually be your information. EXIF data. Um, so one of my favorite tools uh, for uh, messing with metadata or EXIF data is EXIF tool. Um, this works on Windows, Mac, and um, different flavors of Linux. Um, and uh, what this will let you do is um, you can delete metadata or um, EXIF information from uh, videos and pictures and uh, Word documents and PDFs. Um, but if you want to uh, go a little further and have a little more fun, uh, you can uh, put false information into the metadata, um, like uh, uh, different GPS coordinates that show the picture was taken in Antarctica or something. Um, in Windows, you can typically right-click on a file and go to the property details, and it'll give you um, some of the metadata, but not all of it. Um, and uh, you know, to, to really lock down this headache, um, I would suggest going into your mobile device, your cameras, um, your equipment that's uh, capturing this media, and turning off uh, location or geotagging um, for those devices. A lot of times it's on by default. All right, so this section, we're going to get a little paranoid. A little more paranoid. So there's a concept um, in uh, Russian um, military um, thought that's called maskerovka. And um, it's uh, disinformation, um, and, but it's disinformation in a very particular way. Um, and it was used very successfully during uh, the Cold War. If anybody's uh, familiar with the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis or the Bay of Pigs incident, um, you could see where um, Russian disinformation was very, very effective um, and almost led to catastrophic events. Um, so what, um, what Maskerovka is, is it's not just releasing false information. Because if you just release false information, then an analyst who's trained can look and see, OK, here are the gaps in this information. So that gives me an indicator towards what's actually going on. Um, what the Russians did is um, they sent out lots and lots of disinformation, flooded comm channels. Um, but they also seeded in actual true information. So then what it becomes is just noise, because it's all mixed up together. And there's no way, um, without some outside bit of information, of discerning which is false and which is true. You don't have those gaps to go by. So, we can take that um, and uh, apply it to uh, protecting ourselves online. We can use different and meaningless email accounts and usernames um, because uh, a lot of times your username or email account that you chose um, tells somebody something about yourself. So uh, you can uh, either do random characters or something that has nothing to do with you. Um, the same is true of passwords, especially if they can get the unhashed passwords. Um, uh, employing pseudonyms uh, can be useful online as well, especially if you cultivate them. Um, you want to be wary of cloud services. Um, who here is familiar with the fappening? Yeah, I saw the slow hands. Um, okay, so what the fappening was was a, a lot of um, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of celebrities had their uh, their um, nudes leaked online. Um, and one of the main ways that a lot of these nudes were gathered was uh, through their iCloud services. So they had been taking pictures, you know, nude pictures and videos of themselves um, on their Apple devices and having it sync up with the cloud. And then when their cloud account was hacked, you get the nudes. Um, so I would say avoid uh, those sorts of cloud services, especially for information that you don't want um, to be out there in the open. Um, again, it's not a matter of uh, if there will be a leak or a breach, but when. Um, oh, there you go. There you go. False flag. Um, also, uh, you can rotate your phone numbers and passwords often. So even if you are doxed, um, then uh, that information becomes stale and not useful. 
Um, you can use things like uh, Google Voice. You can use um, uh, Trilio. You can use Fring. Those are all services that you can just keep getting new phone numbers through. Um, also, uh, for your physical paperwork, especially paperwork that uh, uh, tells people about you know, your medical information or um, credit card information or things like that, um, you want to go ahead and shred those um, before. Uh, and if you want to go one step further, shred and then burn. Um, using differentiated information release and release cycles. Um, you know, you don't have to constantly tell everybody on Facebook and Twitter where you're going and when and uh, uh, that sort of information. You could uh, even do false information, um, get a whole picture series together of somebody else's vacation and post it as your own. Um, you can uh, seed evidence of uh, hobbies and um, things, uh, patterns that you don't actually have. Again, this muddles up the doctor's ability to actually put together a brief on you. Um, and you can release information late if you really, really want to release photos. Um, because if you're releasing them as you're taking them, then again, that tells people where you are and when you're there. Um, you can also uh, take it a step further and have friends and family corroborate some of these things. Uh, like if you've uh, planted a, a, a false job or a, um, a false uh, um, vacation or something like that, then uh, you can have them you know, like it and comment on it and say, oh yeah, this was a lot of fun, I really enjoyed doing this with you, things like that. Also, cultivating multiple online personas um, and rotating through them is really useful. Um, it's also useful for siloing. Um, you could have different personas for different uh, websites in different areas, um, and that makes it very difficult for them to build um, a, a docs on you. When you're communicating, um, there's a lot of information that's leaked just between you and the site that you're using. Um, so using a VPN with no split turned on because if you don't have that, your DNS is leaking. Um, also, uh, you could consider using Tor. It's not a panacea um, and uh, it's not a, uh, a way to completely protect yourself, but it um, can be useful for um, looking like you're actually coming from a, a geographic location that you're not actually in. Um, Skype is backdoored, we know this, Microsoft admitted it, um, so that's definitely leaking information. If it's backdoored, then the government's not the only one who would have access to that information. Um, so as I mentioned before, you can start building other identities. The longer time that you've been cultivating them, the more real they'll seem. Also encrypt everything where, where possible. Um, uh, you know, use off the record for chatting. Um, PGP, I know it's not user friendly, um, but uh, it is definitely useful. There are lots of other um, email services like um, uh, Tutia uh, based in Germany. Um, there's ProtonMail based in Sweden um, where uh, everything is encrypted uh, as you're using it, um, both between you and the receiver. Um, because remember, uh, email uh, was not built to send sensitive information. It's just plain text flying through the air. All right, so what do you do if you've actually been doxxed? Um, well, you want to, uh, if you feel like you're in uh, personal danger at that moment because you've been doxxed and received a threat or something like that, of course, call the cops. Um, but um, one of the first things you want to do in either case is file a police report. Um, and why you want to do that is because it'll, lead, uh, uh, it'll uh, lend legitimacy to um, all of your future actions or, um, uh, or impacts that might occur from your doxing. Um, and you'll have a case history. Um, you want to fully document what's been doxxed, where it was doxxed, who did it, um, you know, where you think they got the information. Uh, take screenshots and back that up with printouts. Um, that'll be useful in any investigations that have to happen in the future. Um, also, clean up any sensitive information that you found out there. Um, you know, close down accounts that they use to get information about you, things like that. Um, go through, reset all your passwords. Um, that's turn on two-factor authentication because they will try to get back into a lot of the accounts. Um, think about doing um, a credit watch or ID theft watch service um, where they'll um, watch, your, uh, watch for your information um, being used for financial or other um, identity theft purposes. Um, if there is evidence of ID theft or blackmail attempts, uh, the FBI takes those things very seriously. Um, and if you've already got a... Um, 
uh, a police record um, you know, in the system for the doxing happening, and then contact the FBI. They can co coordinate with the, uh, the local police for finding out um, who did it and what happened and things like that. Um, also, uh, especially if you live in um, a, a, smaller, um, a smaller area, you want to talk to your local police about um, swatting concerns that you might have um, and let them know that, hey, I've been doxed. Um, this is typically something that can lead to a swatting attempt, so I want to give you a heads up that please vet with me um, you know, before you send in um, uh, the, the SWAT guys. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, Brian Krebs uh, had this very effectively uh, worked out with his local police, and uh, they were able to, uh, even though he got multiple swatting attempts, uh, they only um, uh, actually went into his house once. Um, in the future, they called him and he said, no, this is bogus, um, and they were able to resolve it that way. Um, another thing that you can do is the FCC, um, uh, their, uh, their website, as well as the FTC, um, have uh, little walkthroughs for if you think there's identity theft going on um, or if your information is being used without your knowledge, um, and uh, they can be really useful for who to contact in your local area um, to get that resolved. So, I'm always looking for um, more information um, about where uh, this information can be leaked from um, and ways to protect against it. So uh, if you guys have um, any of those that I didn't cover um, or um, other things like, a, somebody mentioned to me last talk, um, uh, there's a whole uh, genre of, uh, that bounty hunters use um, and that um, uh, uh, repo men use called skip tracing. Um, and uh, I started looking into that. That was really useful. Uh, so if you can think of anything like that, please hit me up. Um, and I'm ready for questions. Yes? No, this is interesting, and you can see the potential, the potential for abuse in a lot of this. But how prevalent would you say this is in the general populace? Uh, so the, uh, it, it used to be very, very, um, I would say, Starting around five, six years ago, it was mostly in the gamer communities. Um, and uh, now it's moving into um, security professionals, um, into uh, businesses, business owners, like um, the uh, VPs of HOLA, the VPN service, um, are right now being doxxed and um, actively swatted um, because of uh, the stance that they took against um, uh, 8chan, um, one of the online image boards. Um, so it's becoming more and more, if you do something that one of these kids doesn't like, then you, you'll become a target. Um, if you, uh, you know, say something that they take offense to or that they see as being, um, like during Gamergate, uh, there was a lot of um, editors and, uh, and uh, staff writers and things like that that just, you know, they just said, hey, this is what Gamergate is, and, you know, folks took offense to the way they worded something or other. So now these editors and um, writers are being targeted as well. Um, so, I mean, it could be any occupation. Uh, one of the slides you showed earlier was uh, some people uh, seemingly playing telephone or passing a secret, and that looked like um, some, something that was marketed directly to uh, try to reach a different market than maybe uh, what you were just speaking to, um, you know, uh, repo men and and you know whatever private investigators, are these companies actively targeting the general population? And do you think that they have a large share of business coming from them right now? Are, are you talking about the data clearing houses? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're sucking up information on everyone that they possibly can. Um, so I would suggest like going to um, People or Intellius or um, CQ, one of those, and just looking up your information. Um, even for the free, uh, the free accounts um, where you don't have to sign up for anything, uh, it's, it's really scary, the, the stuff that you can find, especially if your name is rather unique. Um, and uh, it literally is everybody. They're not targeting some specific demographic. A follow-up to that would be, if you're interacting with a business that's basically selling you someone else's information, mm -hmm. is there any concern of, you know, giving them financial information of yours to... Oh, certainly. I mean, people, I, I guess, maybe are just not... That's why doxers angles. use somebody else's credit card information. Touche. I mean, they don't pay for anything themselves. They're all little carters as well. Yeah. 
There's also, um, if you wanted to buy your own information to see what's out there, um, a lot of, you can talk to your bank, but a lot of banks will um, give you one-time use uh, card numbers um, that you can say, this is the limit of the card, um, it expires in two months, and um, it generates a new number for you to use. So that's one thing you can do. All right, well thank you guys very much.